Yeah, what's poppin' guys? You got your boy Nandra here. Welcome to another video. So for this video, I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys the game four of my uh, of my 500 GP run in the finals. I like like this game was like pretty funny. I, I definitely enjoyed this game a lot. I uh, I'll of course be like leaving a link down to the a link in the description for the other for the other two videos. So, like it's, it's like a three part video. Like one game has games one and three, the other one has two and five, and then last one has uh, game four. But um, yeah. So same thing as last time. I use PDK. Because obviously, yeah, you can't switch decks in, in Final Stage, right? So, yeah. So this is PDK that's what I was using. If you wanted to go ahead and hear, like, more talk about, like, what the PDK deck it has, again, check out the previous video. Well, actually, you should talk about something about first, but yeah. Anyway, so again, show you guys Force game. So, versus Force, it's it's a matchup where... I don't I don't, I don't don't know necessarily if you're favorite or not. Like, I, I don't think you are, though. Um, just because, like, Elf songs and things like that can, like, mess you up. But, um, but it's a matchup where you need to not only play perfectly, you also need your I guess you also sort of need your opponent to either, like, brick slightly, or to play, like, less sub or to play like, sub-optimally at some point, and take advantage of that. Although that was before Poseidon, I would imagine that now, with Poseidon, it's a lot easier to win. But, but this would be, like, the one of the first games of that I've, like, played, so, uh, uh, we'll find out. So I got to toss back my entire hand. In the mulligan phase for this matchup, you want to dig for Force Nuke. I only play I only play two Force Nuke because I don't queue into this that, that often. But that but that means that when I do queue into this, it's going to be really really hard unless I, unless I pick up Force Nuke very very early. Because what you want to do is you want to go ahead and dismantle boards that they would make before they can Elf Song. Every single time you play on the board, don't let them Elf Song. Because when they do Elf Song, it's going to hurt. It's going to hurt a lot. It's going to be like disastrous to deal with. Now if I now if my deck had Frenzy or going on, it'd be sure you know fine. It's whatever I can kind of deal with it. But I don't have Frenzy Jake, so I literally have to rely on PDK, Force of Newt, Aliza, and then sometimes Rory to get to get rid of these boards. But, but only one of these, or sorry, only two of these are like an on moss, just like, oh, sweep the board away. So the hand the hand that I did pick up though was very, very nice. It gives me like flexible options. I think the only part that sucks is I picked up two Ayalas. You will almost never play out in this matchup unless you're evolving her, unless like very, very late, later into the game. Alright, so now this turn, ignore the first, uh, ignore the first, the force for a second. Like, like this, this force does not matter, and it's not, it's not, it's not, it's not at all relevant for this. So, for this turn, uh, even though I've played this matchup a lot, and I mean a lot in the past, um, I didn't actually realize this till now, but, uh, actually the, the correct thing to do here is to actually play the Somni. So the reason why it's, the reason why it's correct to play Somner Somner first here is because it, it's, it's it's like a threefold sort of, sort of thing. One, if he plays Brambles, you can then put you can then um, you can then put yourself in a spot where his Brambles gets like very very little value, and then just clean up with clean, and then hope the top deck a force mute. Uh, two, if he if he has an Airbound in hand, he won't want to use it on Somni because like it, it, it's a feel it's a feels that sort of thing because that opens up the door for him to play for Lean. Which is again is another, which has like another side benefit of oh that means he won't make another falcon. If he doesn't make another falcon, that's great for me because like if he with just the one falcon right now, you can technically sort of say that that that, that the somnifers that I played out here is sort of earmarked to negate that one falcon. So I not only negate the falcon, but he'll always take the free kill here because he doesn't take it. I get a premium kill on some on something else, and he's he's never gonna willingly let me go for that. So, so this so this kind of hedges me out perfectly. It, like it, it's utterly amazing. And I'm, I'm actually kind of surprised I've like never actually noticed noticed this before. But that just goes to show you that you can always learn something in Shadowverse, like at, like only almost like every single game. So he makes the kill, like like, like I said he would, which will mean that he's probably gonna play at the Starry Elf. Yep, there's Starry Elf right there. That's good, because now because now that means he's kind of like set himself up for failure. Although obviously he couldn't have known that I have a force in my hand. So what I go ahead and do is I just gonna play at Feline, then play at the Somni token. Somni is actually one of the slowest cards, slowest cards in your deck. Um, as far as two drops go, just because like you actually really need it to die, because if you if you're in a matchup like this, we're gonna take a lot of damage. The sooner he dies, the sooner you heal. The later he dies, the later you heal, and that can mean that you, that you might die. So here he plays a bramble and then proceeds to trade. I knew he was gonna trade. The trade is correct. Uh, it, it's it, like it feels it will, it will feel devastating what I do here. Um, but but it, but it was still kind of correct to make the trade. Because you can, you can get messed up otherwise. Well, you can get slightly messed up, not like too too messed up, but you can get messed up. But here, 
I do, of course, have the have the have the young force in the back. You know, I'm going to go ahead and use the force and you know channel my, channel my uh, my midichlorians and just you know be, be going ham. So I go ahead and drop the force. The force is amazing here. Like, and I, I remember like in chat, uh, I remember like on stream where I forgot, like I was really thinking about this. And I was like, hmm, do I just like play an isle or try to do something else? And there, but, uh, like <laughs> the force is always the correct play because like I remove a whopping seven damage out of play. Seven damage, or well, it, it, so it's like five on board. We have to count as evil, so for seven, I remove seven damage out of play. He, he can't, we can't, he cannot play Leaf Man to, uh, to go ahead and like mess me up and prevent me from doing anything else. So this play is just always, always the play. Uh, yes, I picked up multiple Ellis, and those all feel very, very bad, but it's fine because I stunned his growth by, by a large amount, by a very, very large amount, and also did a lot of psychological damage to him as well. The psychological damage is also very important because now he has, he has to try to like start back up, and he has to, he has to go ahead and, and try to like make like seemingly innocuous boards, then play then play uh, Leaf Man, but he's not gonna get the chance now. Because here he doesn't evolve. He really should have evolved. The evolve here was very very good. It got punished by Roy, but it was still very very good because it was kind of like a very very low low drawback. Because I had to have exactly Roy in order to punish you, or Roy or Feline to punish you. But I already used one Feline. I haven't played a single Roy yet. And, and I feel like if I had the right, I would have like played it earlier. Well, maybe played it earlier, but yeah. Anyway, so I'm gonna make the trades here. This turn, also, sorry, that trade also very, very important. It might not seem important, but it's actually it's actually a game deciding trade. The reason why is because when you're playing when you're playing versus versus opponent who's playing brambles, uh, specifically when you're in the situation where the first brambles that they played was from a star elf, you do not know because it, because because they wouldn't have told you um, whether or not they have another brambles in their hand. And so if you play it this way, even if he does have another Brambles in hand, you actually gain back, you actually gain back traction when he plays it. You, you won't get punished as hard, as hard as you could otherwise. Because, okay, so say for example, that I just traded into the Falcon, right? I trade into the Falcon, my guy is now a, a 4-1, that means we play second Brambles, you get to kill it, you get to evolve the straight into my face. The longer he's prevented from evolving into my face willy nilly, the better it is for me. So here, he goes in and plays the Brambles, I'm like, hey, nice predicted a hey, cool and that's good now i could get messed up by elf song but apparently he, my phone just doesn't have it as we see from that trade there because you, you would never make that trade if you had elf song um he also doesn't have rain either or matera so this is also very very good for me because it means that, like, that my opponent on yet another crucial development turn kind of just you know, didn't really do anything like he, he's, he's still playing up fairies on turn five oh sorry on turn six actually on turn six and yeah i just took four damage but i healed for two i removed seven earlier so, so I've kind of like gained a lot of HP back. And he's also like um, lost a lot of damage. But anyway, here I pick up I pick up the second force and I'm like, hey, okay, so, so that means we probably won. That means we probably won, right? Because a big thing about about playing versus aggro, especially when the aggro especially when the aggro player goes first, is that no matter what, you cannot cannot be at a situation in, in which like that like turn four turn five you're at like 11 hp like when those games happen you die you, you should have just die because like no matter how good you are as a player like you un unless unless that person just somehow like breaks or, or like your deck is like somehow like equipped equipped to somehow like punish aggro in some bizarre way you're going to die from that spot but um but i'm still at 15 so i'm still kind of like healthy i can still die though i can make no mistake i can definitely still die and as much as I would like to use the Force Mute here and just be be like perfectly safe, I don't know if he has Green Glen Accent in his hand. So I'm just gonna make a play that's again another like sort of like halfway play that also that also encourages him to trade and can get and can make me uh, gain more HP that way. So I go ahead and play the Isla and then play the Roy. I play the Roy for for Dragon Strike because obviously I don't need mana anymore. All I need to do is just remove his board as much as possible. I go ahead and evolve. I go I go up to nine mana, which is you know good. Um, I go ahead and remove the, remove the, the Insect Lord, and that's great. So I have two creatures of them in play, they both have 2 HP, which means he, which means he might be incentivized to want to trade. He might not trade, he could play Rain here finally, but I'd be fine versus that. Now here, he drops the Young Airbound, like, oh, okay. So this, so, alright. So he, so he had the airbound here, and and that's like pretty good, because like, mind you, up until now he hasn't he hasn't actually he hasn't actually gotten a good airbound target, because he he just hasn't had a board, or he hasn't had like good like recycle good like creatures that you'd like to recycle. So here he plays Star Elf to get his third to get his third brambles. I'm like, hey, okay, sure. And now I finally get a good force mute turn. Uh, a good force mute turn. This force mute allows me to, to both play it and develop in the same turn, and I can go ahead and just drop my waters. And this sets me up for a nice like three or four turn lethal. 
So I play it here, that's turn one. I play the waters, yeah, this is still the same turn. He plays Green Glen Axeman, I play Poseidon, then I play White Frost Whisper, that's two. He, he probably ha he probably has to like give me give me most, if not the if not the rest of his resources while dealing with that. Then my turn, I can play I can play Ozzy the Haka, I can probably evolve it, go face, and that just like and that just like sets me up for the game right there. So then we go ahead and drop the force. Now the nice thing is that like by this point, I well, I, I still don't really know if he's aggro or not because he doesn't like play goblin or anything like that. But but it also means that on the flip side, all those goblins he might draw are going to hurt him a lot because like you're drawing goblin on turn eight, and, like that's not good. That's, that's not a good sign. But here he plays second brambles. Now I really really like this play for my opponent, although I still really disliked it for, from my end because like I it, it was really annoying. <laughs> But, but he gets up, he gets up some nice like fan value. He has two Brambles in play, so I can't trade with two twos or anything like that. I have to trade with a three attack unit or better, which means I will have to use up my last of all, which is you know that's fine. Um, so there are a few different lines you can go for here. All through the line, I just go for the clean line of just like playing Poseidon. But here I kind of misplayed a little bit. The I don't know why, but like but like seeing that like five four leaf man like broke my brain. I I, I don't I don't know what to say. Um, the correct play though is to actually go ahead and play up the Isla, Evo the Isla, suicide it into the Leaf Man, go ahead and push face for two. You don't quite set up two turn lethal, but you get kind of close because if you can't remove the one threes, you will win. But if you can, you're like one damage off, but that's like fine because you're playing PK. You also have like an Aussie in play and, and stuff like that, so it's like it's still a gravy. But instead, I make some like Monk S four house play of evolving the ward to then trade into the Leaf Man to then. Yeah, yeah, to them might press the spirit. There's no point in me holding and again, there's no point in me holding a satellite. Like the Ella has already like like all the, all these islands have already like done their purpose, so there's no point in me doing anything else with the with the other one with the last one, right? I'm already at ten mana, like, I can't you know get to eleven mana. Or can I kappa? Anyway, so he drops the airbound here, and now I want you to go ahead and, and, and think about that for a second. So he had two airbounds in like quick succession, which again would imply that he had the airbound earlier, and that and that if I and that if I had played into it with the fleen, I would have gotten airbound it, and I, I would have like been in a, been in a kind of bad spot because again he would have had a lot of value from there possibly, but I don't actually know. But anyway, if you play Star Elf here again, the Star Elf doesn't pull anything because he well he shouldn't pull anything. It might I, I don't know. But uh, I shouldn't pull anything because he should he should be out of targets for because that, that was the third brambles they, they played earlier. So, but here he just like makes trades again, plays some fairies. Yeah, he should really really be going face. Like, like there's no point in protecting a board now. Like it's basically just another for shut up turn. But here I've more I've more or less been told I can just do you know whatever I want to do. Thankfully for me, my opponent did not play a Sky Devouring Horror last turn. Sorry, he didn't play the he didn't fulfill the quest to, to play a Sky Devouring Horror last turn. Um, he would. He actually needed one more card to, to be put in play to be able to play it. So I got very, very lucky there because if he had played it, I would have been in a bad spot because I don't think I would have been able to get rid of everything of every single creature on the board. Nor, nor, nor would I be able to kill him, which would have been you know my mistake for having like made made the trade that I made the beauty of a few turns prior. But anyway, here he just makes some trades, and once he makes his trades, I, I know that, that there's no way for me to die because like again, he needed he needed like burst shot or something like that to maybe even have a chance. I, I think he's like killed off a lot of fairies. Um, well, a lot, not, yeah, yeah, uh, this would be a very, very, um, 10 and 11, but yeah, but it's not good enough, because he has a board, but it doesn't matter, because, like, he's just kind of dead, like, I was able to prevent a lot of damage from, from going to my face this game, which is, like, very, very good, just because, like, when you're versus aggro, you need to force him to trade, like, you either need to force him to trade, or you need to hope that they, like, fuck up, choke, and, like, trade, or whatever, and, and that, and that kind of happened all bit this game, although, for all the shit talking I've like done this game, I well, so, well partial shit, partial shit talking I've done. The uh, a big thing about this game is that somehow uh, my opponent hit need, my opponent hit like none of the following cards. He didn't hit uh, Greenland Axeman, Matera, Rain, um, Fairy Driver, Elfslime. So some, somehow somehow missed all of his power drops. That's crazy. But, uh, but you know, I mean, you take those, right? Take those, sometimes lucky. Yeah. If you guys enjoyed the video, go ahead and leave a like. Go ahead and hit the, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. Let me know what you think about this uh, about this replay down in the comments below. Thank you guys for watching, and I will catch you guys next time.